Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Dan O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. And today I am joined by Stuart McInnes, the owner of BD Recruitment. Super excited to be sitting down and chatting with him today about business, about his business specifically, challenges, business, you know, the journey into business ownership, best practices, really share a sneak peek into what it's like to, to build and operate a business. Um, lots of fun things that we can get into today. Uh, but Stuart, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and be here with me today. Uh, excited to get into it. So without further ado, why don't we just start with a little bit of background. If you would you know, give the audience just a, a super brief history of your background and tell us about the business. Yeah, for sure, Chandler. First off, thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, thanks for putting this together. So, again, my name is Stuart McInnes with BDA Recruitment. Born and raised in Austin, which makes me a unicorn if you've uh, ever been around Austin and asked most of the people around here. Um, started in the recruiting age industry about seven or eight years ago. Um, started my own business about a year and a half ago coming up. Um, so, in my previous life, um, was worked at Indeed for several years, worked with some of the largest um, Fortune 500 companies with their advertising strategies, training up their teams, um, you know, essentially showing them all the ins and outs of recruiting. Um, for the last few years, I kind of shifted gears, focused uh, directly on the major the major staffing and recruiting companies in the world. Um, so once you kind of pulled the the wool back for some of the largest staffing and recruiting companies, um, you know, kind of decided I could make that leap. I could do that myself. Um, like I said, that was about a year and a half ago. So it's been amazing ever since. Very cool. I'm excited to kind of dive into some of the specifics here, but uh, let's just let's start by just setting the stage. I always like to kind of ask a couple of questions uh, to set the stage for the viewers. Is everybody's a little bit different in where they're at in business, what the structure looks like, all that kind of stuff. So setting the stage, generally speaking, what is your current kind of ownership structure look like? And by this, I mean, um, are you a solo owner, founder? Do you have business partners in the business? Have you taken on outside investment? Like what does that, you know, generally speaking, look like for, for you and your business? Sure. So yeah, we bootstrapped it from the beginning. Uh, it's a partnership between my wife and I, 50-50. Um, so anybody who works with their partner kind of understands the ups and downs of how that goes. Um, we do have um, a, a direct employee, um, our marketing director, Zach, and we have a few people that work on contract recruiting basis, um, typically that are Spanish speaking. Um, yeah, sorry, what was the last question of that or did I cover it? I think that pretty much covered it. Gave us a, a good sense of kind of what the, the ownership structure looks like, um, which is fantastic because I, I always love to ask about, you know, roles within the business. And for you specifically, as one of the owners in the business, what would you classify your current role as? Sure. I mean, I classify myself as the CEO, but um, I do most of the business development, uh, put all the processes together, um, do a lot of the recruiting. Um, and then I kind of rely more so on my wife to do more of the administrative stuff, a lot of the marketing stuff, social media, um, and really just keeping the wheels on the bus. Beautiful. And I know in, you know, in action coach specifically, and you've had the the ability to, you know, hear some of the things and work with some of the, the those on our team. Um, but we talk about this, you know, working on the business versus in the business. Um, I'm curious, you know, where are you at today? Uh, with regards to kind of percent of time working in the business, doing the job, uh, kind of working through the operations versus working on the business, kind of strategy planning, future forecasting, that sort of thing. Uh, where are you at today in terms of kind of percentage on on either of those? For sure. And certainly as um, at the beginning stage of my business, a lot more working on the business rather than in the business. So I'd say right now, I'm probably in the 90, 10 um, on versus in. So trying to get more so working in the business, uh, sorry, working on the business, um, doing a lot more stuff, you know, in terms of marketing, lead aggregation, trying to kind of take that to the next level, putting the processes in place to kind of continue to fuel the growth. Um, so we've got pretty aggressive plans here in the next few years. So I think I'm excited about Action Coach and, and kind of putting all this stuff and help us um, dial it in a little better. Beautiful. So let's let's move around and actually talk about what makes your business so special. Um, so when we look at I always like to you know, ask questions around, say, target market or the, the market that you serve. Um, best way I know how to ask this question is if I'm in the audience and I'm watching this video, how do I know that I'm a good fit or I might know somebody who's a good fit for the services that you provide? For sure. So we are pretty uh, diverse in the terms of industries we serve. Um, I would say the biggest and best, um, I guess, need that we serve is people struggling to find and attract great talent. Right. So a lot of times there are you know, difficult roles. It's a major project. 
Um, you know, people have been banging their head against the wall for weeks or months. You know, a recent client of mine mentioned she was doing accounting all day during the day or first half of the day, HR all afternoon, and then working till 11 o'clock at night, um, trying to do all that stuff. And so I know a lot of business owners um, that resonates, right? When you're wearing every single different hat um, and trying to decide where the priority is. So uh, really we, we outsource that, take all that off their plate, you know, and at the end of the day, business owners and HR uh, leaders, they just want to decide, is this person a good fit or are they not? They don't want to chase through 50, 100, 200 applications, right? They just give me two or three guys or gals that are rock stars. And then I'll say yes or no. And that's kind of where we come in. Sweet. So when we, I know there's other, you know, recruiting businesses and firms and things like that out there. Uh, what makes, uh, what makes you all a little bit different? Why do your clients choose to work with you over any of your competitors? For sure. Um, definitely our knowledge, right? Our scope, our network. So we're very aggressive with advertising. So again, I mentioned I worked with some of the largest staffing recruiting companies in the world and kind of seeing what they did. They really didn't take every job in every company, um, you know, I don't want to say serious, but they didn't take it to the level that it needed to be to be successful across the board, right? So when we partner up, we are extremely aggressive with our sourcing efforts, with our advertising efforts. We go out and find every person that matches what you're looking for and put a message in their inbox. So a lot of times, you know, that instead of saying like, we'll do what it takes to get it done, most of these customers will say, well, this is the resources we have available for this customer for this job. Um, so we just don't think that way. In addition to that, we obviously have the you know, retainer, you know, upfront cost, which is pretty unusual in this industry. And then of course, Every job includes a 30 to 90 day, no questions asked replacement guarantee. Very nice. I love that. Um, so, I, you know, because we're kind of on the topic of workforce and that's the the area that that y'all work in, um, you know, I always I always like to ask a couple questions about just building team in general. And this may be specific to your business as you continue to, to look forward into the future, or it may be, you know, what you're uh, how you work through with some of the clients you work with. Um, but what is the approach to hiring and retaining team members today? Is it different than it has been the last couple of years? Uh, what are you seeing out there in terms of uh, recruiting and hiring and what's most important for uh, businesses to be looking for? For sure. I mean, everybody today is laser focused on wages. Um, that's always the number one reason candidates go from job to job is they're trying to look for more, for bigger opportunity, for bigger paychecks. And from my standpoint, I think that's totally fair. Um, but there are a ton of opportunities to make sure that we retain them. Um, so a lot of the tricks, obviously, are benefits. That's probably no secret, um, but it's how you structure those benefits, right? So one of the kind of tricks to the trade is, you know, have a three to five year vesting period for all 401k with a really aggressive match. Um, so, for example, especially for some of the lower, the more lower level jobs where they have a tendency to bounce around, if they don't get access to, you know, twenty five, fifty, hundred thousand dollars for several years, they're a lot more likely to stay around and, and see that vest rather than well, I can make two more dollars or 50 more cents an hour down the road. Well, they got a much more vested energy. In addition to that is, you know, everybody wants to feel some level of ownership, right? Where they're driving the business. And I think making sure that it's a very team feel and everybody has a say and it's kind of taking it that next level, everybody has some sense of ownership. Um, I think that's, you know, the most important part in today's day and age. And then again, we partner up with some people around town um, and really focus on their employer branding, right? So again, we want to put videos of your location, of what employee uh, employees are saying, of you know, the reviews. We want to get that best foot forward. So again, when somebody goes to Google and they type, what's it like to work at XYZ company? We want them to see everything there is to know and be like, wow, I absolutely want to work there. Hmm. What's your take on training team members today? You know, If I'm either as a retention tool or just kind of knowing what skills are in the marketplace today, how important do you believe it is that uh, businesses are taking the time to, to train and, and provide skills and kind of a, a roadmap for their, their team members? It's so huge. I think in today's day and age, um, you hire for attitude and you train for skill. Um, it's so important, especially for the more skilled roles. And, you know, for a lot of times, Sometimes you come to a job that you've been banging your head against the wall for three months, even when you partner with an expert. And a lot of times you have to look at the market holistically and say, well, is there just not this person and the price point that I'm looking at? And if not, you know, what's my next best option? And most of the time that's training somebody who's really hungry, who's got the, the general knowledge, but maybe doesn't have the fine tuned skills. Um, that's hopefully something that you can bring out of them. Mm, I love that. Um... So I always like to ask this question because it's a little bit different. Not everyone gets to answer a question like this. Uh, but when you look at either your industry or even your business specifically, what's one thing that you wish more people knew about? Ooh, that is a good one. I would say 
we're not all stalkers. Um, I know a lot of people have had recruiters in their inboxes. A lot of, uh, you know, business owners or HR leaders have had uh, recruiters blowing them up, trying to, trying to offer candidates. I know from our standpoint, we don't, we don't do that. Um, we don't frequently send out cold messages. Everything we do is, is a warm referral or somebody that we've met in the community. Um, so I think there's a big stigma behind staffing recruiting companies. And I think a lot of times the, the first gut reaction is always like, man, it's going to be so, so freaking expensive. Um, but most of the time, if you start to look at the numbers, the other alternative is go pay an HR manager $75,000 a year. And if you only make, you know, five, 10 hires a year, look at the numbers. They don't add up, right? I love that. That is it's important to understand that stuff because it, it, it's not as common knowledge. So I appreciate you kind of sharing some of that here um, and understanding, you know, what your business does, all that kind of stuff. This leads me to, you know, questions around marketing. I always love asking questions around marketing, which is, you know, something that is vital to every business out there. And often it's an area that most business owners tend to kind of fall down about, um, especially in the early days, if they don't have a massive you know background in marketing. So I'm always curious what successful businesses are doing. Um, I know you've been working through a couple of different things when it comes to marketing. So I'm curious when you look at even your marketing budget, uh, you know, one of those um, semi normal things is kind of looking at, you know, total marketing budget as a percentage of sales that kind of come in. Um, where do you kind of fall on the spectrum in terms of, you know, marketing budget as a percentage of sales? Uh, where, how does that work in, in your business? In full transparency, we don't necessarily think about it in percentage of sales. Um, we more think about it from opportunity standpoint. Um, so I, I would say we probably have an amount in mind. It's usually like a flat dollar amount rather than a percentage. Because the thing about our business is there's a lot of fluctuations. Um, sometimes there's big aggressive hiring pushes and we might need to hire 20 people. And other times, you know, might not have the volume that you're looking for, right? So it kind of just depends on the clients and the workload. Um, so again, it for us, it's... A lot just being out in the community. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. I've I've done some online leads and we certainly had some some luck there. And I've done some cold calls and we've cold emails and had some luck there. But at the end of the day, you know, people you know and your network is your net worth. And as corny as that sounds, it's always the number one way to get out in the community and to have any traction in business whatsoever. I love that. And that, that naturally brings up my my next question. And uh being a business that's you know about a year and a half into it so far uh, you know it's still building still growing that sort of thing uh how many different you know marketing strategies do you use currently so you mentioned some networking being out in the the network maybe a, a little bit of kind of cold outreach that sort of thing um give me a little bit more context on how many different strategies that y'all are currently using uh and then you know of those which is which are the ones that you've noticed are the most impactful for your business as you continue to grow for sure. I mean, definitely hands down networking is, is the front runner. Um, the close rate on that is substantially higher than any, any sort of cold leads. The response rates through the roof. Um, in terms of what else we're doing, you know, like I said, we've done some cold outreach through various platforms, cold calls, cold emails, cold LinkedIn reach outs, um, had some degree of success, but pretty minimal. Right. And I'm always the type of person that you know, I certainly want to hear yes a lot more than I hear no. And then if you're going out there doing a lot of cold calls, you're, you're certainly not going to hear more yes and no. You're going to hear a lot more no than yes. Um, not to say that that's not value, um, because we do put some emphasis on that, but that we more so call that whale hunting, where we're going after this huge opportunities rather than, you know, the small and medium business, which is typically our demographic. But uh, yeah, it's probably like four, four different avenues um, in terms of like categories. And then on the networking side, you know, there's everything from local networking groups to national networking groups to chamber of commerce and kind of everything under that scale. Beautiful. I appreciate that. Um, cause I know that every business is a, a slightly different direction that they take when it comes to, to marketing. So getting some ideas on different industries, different business owners taking different tracks, uh, give some good context there. So I appreciate you allowing us to go through some of those. Uh, but we've spent a bunch of time talking about kind of the business, sharing a few best practices, things like that. I'd love to take a step back and just kind of dive into the, the journey a bit more and getting into business for yourself. Um, so I heard a little bit about it in your, your background, but I'm curious, 
especially a year and a half ago, made the decision to jump into business for yourself, had been working for some some bigger companies out there. Um, take us take us through what that journey actually looked like. Uh, how did how did it feel to make that leap from uh, having something that maybe you know is considered more secure out there and then taking the leap and jumping into business for yourself? Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Um, it took a lot of prayer and reflection and, and thinking about the right decision. At the end of the day, I mean, you just got to be fed up with your situation. And I think that's kind of the point where I was is I was working extremely hard. I was putting in extremely long hours and I didn't see the type of, I guess, you know, merit increases, but also like personal recognition and and I really just wasn't happy with my situation. At the end of the day, the recruiting market was extremely hot. I felt I learned all the right skills um, to, to make a go at it. And it almost felt like a now or never. Um, you know, I was in a good spot. I had the support of my wife, which was the most important thing. And um, yeah, like I said, the rest is history. The first few months, you know, a lot of trial and error, like with any business. And then, um, like I said, once once you start figuring things out and, you know, I love the Tony Robbins saying, you you want to take the islands you burn the boats because you give yourself no other option and you know, that's essentially the only way i've gotten here <laughs> i love that and over the course of you know a year and a half being in business um what have been some of the the top lessons that you've learned as a business owner and growing from uh starting the business to really being a business owner what were some of the top things that you had to learn along the way i mean just keep going right i, I always um, similar to you, like to ask really successful business owners that have been doing it for years, like, like, what is the trick? What's the one thing? And the one thing is always the same thing. It's just keep going. When you can't make payroll, when you're having a bad month, you know, just keep going. Um, and I, that always resonates with me uh, above everything else. And then, of course, if you're talking more strategically about business skills, um, you know, leadership has been really important. You know, obviously having the right things to focus on, you know, really heavy on the 80-20 um, 80% or 20% of the stuff drive 80% of the revenue. So focusing on those actions, um, you know, I would say probably my, the biggest things that I, was, that I walk away with. It's fantastic. Um, so I always like to ask about challenges or roadblocks that you've had to overcome. Uh, and when you look back on, on your journey, and this could be, you know, beyond just the last 1.5 years here, but when you look back at your journey, what has been or are there any kind of memorable roadblocks that you've had to overcome that kind of come to mind uh, the, that has really set the stage for you to, to be where you are today? I mean, honestly, the economy has been challenging. I'm sure a lot of businesses can, can uh, you know, that resonates with or can uh, relate to that. But I'd say, you know, January of this year started out, um, the pipeline had a lot, the first you know, major clients that, you know, I was expecting to close all kind of came back with, we're not going to move forward right now. And again, when you kind of start to not necessarily rely on something, but hopefully uh, expect that it's coming in and then to have that kind of that blowback. Um, and so that was kind of one of those key moments where it's like, well, what are you going to do now? Right. You know, the economy is kind of going, taking a turn, people are, are panicking. Right. But what are you going to do? And so I think it's, again, goes back to like, just keep getting out there. And then when, when the weeks suck and just keep getting out there. And when you have a great week and you feel like you're on top of the world to get out there some more, those are the times you want to go find another one. Hmm. So I'm curious on, you know, cause it is all over the news over the last, what, six months, you know, big companies are laying off team members, all of that sort of thing. Um, for businesses that are in the market to hire that are looking to replace team members. Um, is it, actually a really good environment for them right now, having more people kind of coming into the marketplace that wouldn't have normally been had there not been layoffs. Can, I, can you speak to that at all? Well, I would say it depends what you're recruiting for. Um, in the tech space, 100%. I think, I don't know if there will ever be another time like this where there's the top talent available, you know, for a discount. Um, so if you're looking for anything in the IT field, operations field, I would absolutely go target those specific companies. Um, in terms of the other jobs, those jobs have all remained incredibly competitive. I was actually just reading an article earlier this week that the major categories, so medical, manufacturing, construction, all of those remain incredibly hot. The demand for jobs is still high and the supply for candidate strokes is extremely low. Um, so it really, like I said, depends what side of the lane you're on. For us, we do a lot of focus on the kind of the blue collar construction, um, you know, skilled and unskilled labor and kind of everything on that side of, side of the gamut. So we've kind of been fortunate in that perspective, but uh, 
yeah, like I said, it really just depends where, where you're falling. Well, that's fantastic. I think, um, there's a lot of positive light in what you said, really on both sides, being able to, to have an opportunity if, if you're in the space where there's maybe a little bit, um, uh, greater availability of, of potential team members, but on the other side that, that does show kind of some, some strength to the workforce. So that's, that's really cool. Um, so let's talk about what comes next. You know, we talked a little bit about your journey and getting here. We talked about your business, um, but I'm curious, where do you see it as you continue to grow being, you know, a year and a half in, what do you see for the next three to five years as you continue to grow your business? Uh, for me, like I said, I'm really liking this structure of action coach. I think that's going to kind of help me scale this to the next level. So focusing a little less on, on the business, starting to delegate a little more um, so I can work, focus more in the business. Um, from my standpoint, I do have some very aggressive growth targets. Um, so with those growth targets, obviously the result is, you know, establishing a foothold here in the central Texas area and then starting to expand into the local um, larger markets here in Texas. So um, the next kind of like three year stretch is to move into Dallas and Houston um, because they also have a very large networking and uh, I guess opportunity to get in front of the right companies and the kind of the small to medium business segment, even some of the larger ones. Um, and then from that point, expanding to some of the more um, business favorable markets. So, um, so like Florida um, and probably Arizona as the, the following two. Very cool. So it, it, when you look at just goal setting, um, what's been your approach to goal setting? Are you someone that, you know, makes a lot of goals that are long-term in nature? Uh, do you short-term goals? Do you write them down? Kind of what, what has been your approach to goal setting? Definitely write them down. Um, I've typically stayed a little more short-term, um, more recently trying to focus more on long-term um, because again, at the end of the day, it's all a math equation and I'm a very like math operations driven person. So like when I look at the numbers, you know, when you look at 10 million, it's like, oh shit, how am I ever going to get to 10 million? But when you look at scalable growth of, okay, well, if I just add four people here that can, you know, do 50% of what I'm doing and then four people over here and then five people over here, then it starts to, to make a little more sense. Um, so focusing now certainly more on a lot more long-term, you know, five, 10 years, um, and hopefully exiting planning. Um, if my kids don't talk me into to saving it for them, which is what they're they're trying to do now. And I love that. One of my my favorite quotes, and um, I know Brad Sugar says it a bunch, and I, I know it's others have said the same thing, but the uh, you tend to underestimate what you can do in 10 years, but overestimate what you can do in a year. Uh, so the importance of both having long-term and short-term goals and being able to break it down into what can actually be you know done in the next 90 days or next six months or whatever it is. Um, so I absolutely love that. Uh, well, we Stuart, we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation so far today. Um, for everyone that is watching, make sure you save this video, come back to it. Cause there's a whole bunch of nuggets that you can pull out here and start using in your own business. Uh, but before we kind of start wrapping this thing out and, uh, you know, getting into kind of the final question I'd love to ask, uh, I've got kind of a round of rapid fire questions, which are meant to be kind of top of mind answers. I know we could probably sit down and go way more in depth on these if we really wanted to, but for today's purposes, being respectful of time, um, kind of quick responses for each of these. Uh, so I've got about four of them here. You ready for, for my rapid fire questions? Hit me. All righty. What is your current key to success? Just keep going. Beautiful. What's one piece of advice that you would give to other business owners? Be known in the community and get out there. Hmm. Love that. What's one book that you're either reading right now or have read most recently? $100 million offers. Ooh, that's a good one. If you had to choose one area to just magically improve in your business tomorrow, what would it be? Online marketing. Love it. Stuart, before we jump into the final question here, uh, for those that are watching that want to learn a little bit more about the business, connect with you, chat with you, build some connection here. Cause you know, being, being connected in the community is important. Um, I absolutely love these, these interview series cause making connections is part of what we're all about. Um, so with that, where can the audience go to find out a little bit more information? How can they connect with you? Uh, give us kind of the details of, of where to go next. Yeah, big uh, emphasis for us on LinkedIn platform. So absolutely connect with me there. Um, huge in getting out, meeting people, especially in the B2B space, would love to connect personally. Um, so you guys can email me at Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, at B-D-A recruitment.com. 
Um, and yeah, I would lo love to get together. Those are the best ways. We've got some other um, YouTube channels, Instagram, but big focus there on LinkedIn. So I would love to connect with you guys there. Beautiful. Appreciate that. For those that are watching, make sure that as soon as we wrap up here, go down to the description below. All of that, uh, the email, LinkedIn, all that stuff will be there in the description. Uh, make sure you take the time. Really connect with Stuart. Uh, make yourself known, especially if you're here in Central Texas. Make the make the connection. Get out. Have some fun. Uh, growing community is really important. So uh, put all that there. But Stuart, as we wrap out, got one final question for you today. That is, what is most inspiring to you today? I guess it seems simple, but uh, not having to worry about the cost, right? And it, you know, from a family perspective, you know, I want to be able to buy the airplane ticket and fly across, you know, to the beach, to the Dominican Republic, to Costa Rica. I want to be able to go to the nice five-star restaurant and never have to worry about how much does the steak cost or the lobster. I just want to pick that. Um, I think that's what keeps me going. In addition to that, I think it's just, I want my kids to look back and be like, wow, my dad was a badass. Um, so I love that. That is absolutely fantastic. Stuart, thank you so much for taking the time. It has been a true pleasure to learn a little bit more about your journey into business ownership, the stresses, the fears, the excitement that all kind of comes with that transition, everything that's, you know, going with the, the business here over the last year and a half. Um, lots of great nuggets. I appreciate you sharing with us and, and being able to, to be here and, um, yeah, and just kind of share your wisdom with us. So thank you so much for taking the time. Absolutely, Tanner. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, man.